Hello everyone and welcome to IntelliPath's live webinar on prepared data for perspective and for perspective and predictive modeling like a data engineer. Today's webinar is conducted by Mr. Ayush Kuba, who is a senior AI and data science professional with strong business acumen and with eight years of technical experience. And he is currently working as director of data science at Sprinkler. He has more than eight years of experience in the field of data science, ML, AI, and related fields. So guys, let's welcome Mr. Mr. Ayush in the session. Sir, over to you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining in on a Sunday afternoon. Before we begin, let me talk a bit of more about me, right? The reason I'll talk a bit more about me because we'll get an idea of how I transitioned my career into this particular field. So let me quickly share my screen. And I would want this session to be as interactive as possible, right? It could be regarding your career path right uh, job perspective it could be about salary it could be about currently you are in this so and so thing and you want to transition into this particular field right so feel free to bug in between let's have this session as interactive as possible so uh, my name is Ayesh Kuba right I have been working in this field of data science since last eight years so you can imagine like I was part of this particular field uh, when it was not so glorified, right? So I actually started my career as an Android developer. I was uh, very much influenced with mobile apps, okay? Back in 2013 is when I started learning Android, okay? I started learning how to develop mobile applications. Then I got an internship and I was able to work with some of the big companies for developing their Android app, okay? So I was very much influenced with that. Right. But as soon as my internship ended, right. And uh, the way I got my offer was I was put into a data analytics team. It happened by chance and I couldn't leave that particular company for a year. There was a bond of a year. So for that year, I thought that, okay, once this one year is finished, I'll move back to Android. That is where I like the most. That is where I want to work a lot. Right. But while I was working as a data analyst, Initially, my job was to work a lot on collecting data from various sources. So at times I used to work on SQL, at times I used to work on a lot of uh, tools to extract data from the web. Okay. So that was my first experience with the data, right? And eventually as months passed by, as I got to know the power of data analytics, you know, after a year, I made my mind that, okay, I don't want to go to Android back because data analytics is something which I'm more good about and which could be the future. Okay. So that's how my data analytics journey started from an Android developer to an SQL developer, then collecting data from various sources, right? Working as a data engineer, then I transitioned as a data science as a, as a data scientist and then I have also worked as an ML engineer and in my last company I was working as an AI engineer and currently I am working as a director of data science at Sprinkler. Okay, so I have got, I was lucky enough to work in various of those profiles. A majority of the reason being because I have had worked in a startup environment, right? So when you are working as a in a startup, right? So as you can see, I've uh, co-founded one startup, which didn't work out to be good. Then I joined another startup, which was working on similar product called Foisin.ai. When I joined them, it was like a two month old startup. So you can imagine the stakes were very high, right? When I joined them, I already had, uh, I think four, four and a half years of experience, right? I was already working in that particular field and they said that join us for a good stake, obviously, and you will be the founding member of all the machine learning and AI activity at Voice, right? And then once I joined there, I was the sole person who was working as a data engineer, as an ML engineer, as a data scientist, because there was no other one, right? We were only three, four, two, three to four people in that particular company, right? When I joined in. And then from that particular point, we grew that particular company to a strength of 50. And then last year, we were successfully acquired by a company named Sprinkler, which is working in a similar domain, right? It provides a customer experience platform for people to work on. Okay. So that's how journey has been, right? In between this journey, I have worked a lot on things like speech to text, text to speech, uh, converting, you know, building intent engines. Intent engines is nothing but, so for example, I'm saying something. So what is my intent of saying something? That's it. So if I have to identify, so, you know, things like that, that's nothing but creating intent engines. Similarly, voice bot, customer experience platforms, and all of these. Any person, right, whether he's coming from mathematical background, economics background, 
engineering background can become a data engineer okay so today we'll spend some time in understanding what is a data engineer okay and how and why data engineering is one particular field which is booming a lot okay and you know uh, when I take these sessions and I take all of these sessions and eventually at the end of the session, many people do realize, right? That like, if I talk about data science part, right? So data science applying algorithm is just very simple. Applying algorithm is like five to six lines of codes, which anyone can do, right? And slowly and steadily that particular field, right? where you're just applying algorithms will become redundant, right? And that will be the time when things like data engineers, right? Things like ML ops will come into place. So what exactly a data engineer does? Let's understand that. So let's understand what I did. Okay. Let's uh, understand how the current software, the current things that I work on. So for example, let's say you call a customer care. So let's say you are calling a customer care of your mobile, whatever, like Geo, Airtel, whatever you use. Okay, so any telecom operator. So as a customer, you call that call center. This is nothing but let's say call center. Calls a call center, okay, and call center connects an agent to you. Okay, you explain your problem to the agent. Agent gives you a solution. Many a times it is not able to give you a solution, right? But still, on the agent side, he is either not talking to you properly. Many a times. All the issues that you are telling to agencies, uh, you know, the response of agent is like restart your mobile, right? For example, you call Apple sales, Apple customer care, right? And you're saying your phone is hanged. The only solution they give you is restart your phone, right? So you will be, you know, you will be very much agitated with the customer care department, right? So that is where we come in, okay? So our AI software comes in. What we do is we analyze all such calls. There could be millions of calls in a day, right? As of now, I'll tell you, we are working for the one of the biggest telecom operators in India. We handle a call volume of even more than, you know, 10 to 20 millions. That's not even the full data, okay? So you are able to mine all these 10 to 20 million call recordings and tell that, okay, your customers are facing these broad issues. Maybe it could be a about network or it could be about pricing or it could be about maybe competitors that competitors are better so if i tell these three broad issue right to a particular company won't they be able to come and fix these because that is something that is affecting their customers right and customers are gone right customer is the king and if you are not able to serve your customers you are not able to do anything isn't it so that's where that is where okay the ai is so useful imagine a person coming if i ask people to, you know, hear these 20, 10 million calls and analyze what is being discussed in this call. Is it possible? Can I do it? No, right? Humanly, it's not possible. And that's why previously everything was taken for granted. Brands were taken for granted. That's why BSNL, MTN used to have monopoly, right? Because even if they are not giving any services, right, it's still fine. But nowadays, if you don't get a service, people switch. There is mobile number portability, they will switch like this. So if you're not working with your clients, if you're not working with your customers, it's all gone. So now let's understand as a data engineer in the same scenario, where does the data, data engineer fits in? So I told you that, you know, this is call center, this is customer, this is agent, both of them are connected by a call center. So the data engineer's job will be to process these calls. When I say process these calls, basically process these calls to our AI engine and then communicate back whatever results it came, whatever analysis is then, whatever results it came, it communicate it black to the clients. So that's the typical job of a data engineer. So you see right from the very start where you are collecting the data, then analyzing the data and then getting results. In each of these buckets, data engineer plays a pivot role. Let's understand the, how a data science project actually works first. Before that, right? So the first thing that you do is you understand a business problem. If there is no problem, there's no solution. Simple, right? So let's take the same example, XYZ Telecom, I won't name any company. So XYZ Telecom comes to me, okay, says, hey, look, Ayush, a lot of our customers are getting uh, dropped off. So we are not even, people who are joining us is far less than people who are leaving our telecom. Can you please help us out? Okay. So basically they are asking me to find reasons or find people who can churn out. 
everyone understands the word churn churn means who will leave the company or who will leave that particular telecom operator so once i understand this particular business problem the next thing is i go to this this is the second step i go to the telecom operator and tell them okay fine i can help you out but help me in getting some data i want you know historical data where i want to see people so i want historical data of people who have churned out or basically people who left you know who left your operator and also people who didn't leave the operator okay who are still with you so i want some historical data maybe give me uh, 10 to 20000 records i want to analyze this okay now you have got the data the third step is analyzing this you analyze this data to understand okay what are the reasons people are churning out what are the reasons people are churning out you will see like maybe because competitors offer good price or it could be because call quality could be an issue so broadly i can say quality then pricing then it could be quality pricing and maybe quantity of the package so in the same price i am getting better package in the other states right so quality quantity pricing all those could be the reason now i go back after analyzing and everything right so these steps that you see out here 3 4 5 6 are all about analyzing i created a model i create a model when i say model it's nothing but i create a software let's say which given someone's data right for example i am still with them given my data it will predict whether i will leave if i will leave xyz operator or not now if a company knows that i am going to leave them won't they give me better offers won't you do also do it happens with us right if we open amazon or uh, you know if we open google and we are looking for some product maybe it happens a lot on mintra if you go to mintra you search for a product let's say you search for it you keep on browsing after some time it will start giving you offer right doesn't it happen with everyone or maybe you are looking for a restaurant and after some time you are you start getting offers for different restaurant doesn't it happen with us right so if a company knows that i'm going to leave them they will give me better offers right and that's how a data science project works so i am helping them i am helping my client i am helping the xyz telecom to make sure that their customers are not churning out okay now in all these process you know the job of a data engineer is very pivotal earlier what used to happen all these work was done by a data scientist a data scientist used to do collection of the data right he will be the only one who will analyze the data okay and then once you have this model you will need to deploy this model when i said deploy deploy doesn't mean just means you'll have to make this model live right it should be running in live right it should be live if it is not live doesn't matter right if you are able to predict someone will leave your company or not after he has left left it doesn't matter right speed matters right so if you are looking for a restaurant if you are getting the offer right away you are more more likely to order right isn't it so let's say you are looking that you want to eat pizza right and that very time you get a message from dominos are you more likely to order from dominos or not just answer this or let's say you at you know let's say at e- in evening 6 pm you searched google that you want to eat pizzas or where are the best pizza and everything if there is one scenario you, that at 6 or 5 you get a message from dominos about their offer okay and then there is another scenario where you get a message at 9 pm from let's say pizzart that they have an offer so you are more likely to buy from here right you are more likely because speed matters okay so if something is running in live when i say live i mean it is running you know in real time then it is a better model right so earlier a data scientist job was used to collect analyze and even deploy when i say deploy it's nothing but making a model live right but nowadays since data scientists are overburdened right and there is humongous amount of data right every day so it becomes really difficult for a data scientist right so what has now happen is data scientist generally work on this data engineer will work on these parts and this will be handled by someone called from ml ops okay which is machine learning operation or basically it's nothing but devops okay so these have become these three different profiles how many of you have heard about the statement data is the new oil how many of you have heard about the statement we have heard about it a lot right the reason everyone says data is a new oil is because this this very step that you see is very pivot if i don't have anything out here if i'm not able to collect any data i mean you don't have the data what will you do you cannot analyze you cannot deploy there's nothing that you can right 
So having a clear cut strategy for collecting a data, right? For collection of data, it is highly, highly important. Any idea how many hours of videos are put on YouTube every day, are uploaded on YouTube every day? Or let's say reels, whatever. I mean, for comparison, I'm just talking about YouTube. Then we'll talk about how many reels because reels are just a rough guess. Let's think about in the world. So in 2019, this stats was last calculated in 2019, it was 500 hours are uploaded every minute. It has transitioned, if I just make a maths out here, that's nothing but 720,000 hours every day. And that was in 2019. Compare 2019 to 2022, this number will be easily, okay, in some millions. It will be easily in millions. So can you see the amount of humongous data that is generated every day? Same study back in 2019. Let's see how many Instagram stories are put every day. How many Instagram stories might be there every day? Or at least total population. Let's talk about India only. 140 crore people, right? There will be at least 10, I mean, 20, 30 crore people on Instagrams, right? And everyone picks you know, puts at least one or two stories every day these days on an average. Just take a rough guess. So it's 280,000 per minute. This is the amount of stories that are spread every minute. Multiply it with 60 you get every hour. Multiply it with 24 you get on a day. So handling such humongous amount of data is very, very important. That's where your data engineers come into place. Can we live without data engineers? Can you survive? Can any company survive without, without data engineers? Not even now. Can they do it in future also? With future, the data is increasing. The size of the data is increasing, right? So data engineer is very, very pivotal. Okay. Many people fear it out that, okay, since it has engineer in the title, then it's only for technical people. The answer is no. Okay. It is for both technical and non-technical people. Right, because nowadays things have streamlined so much that any non technical person can come and learn. If you see, you know, data scientist or data analyst, right, earlier only non technical people used to do this job, right? Even data science back in the day, there was there were tools like R and uh, MATLAB, these used to be done by not people who come from engineering backgrounds, okay. So slowly you will find that, you know, this barrier of technology, non-technology will be removed because for everything, there will be software. It's just that you should know how to use that software in a good way. So you, no matter which company you talk about, the salaries of data engineers is humongous. If I talk about, you know, US, right, an average salary in Meta or Facebook, right, it's close to $175,000. Right. I mean, you can just imagine. It's roughly what? I think 1.4 CR or 1.5 crores package. All right. An average package in US, any which ways in US, it's 50,000. Average package in US is $50,000. So obviously we cannot compare this value to Indian value. But if you compare the average value to this particular value, it's humongous. Check for Airbnb. It's 170,000. Check for Capital One, Microsoft, Cisco. I mean, you name any company. There's no company that pays you less than 100K USD, right? For a job of data engineer. The reason being because the size of the data is increasing a lot, right? Even if I go, right? Why go with my words? I look for data engineer jobs, Nokri. Okay. Let's say I look for that. And even if I'm looking for this, I mean, just uh, around me. See this amount, 14,905 jobs that I'm just seeing just like that. Is this, I mean, a less number? Is this a less number to be excited about? Let me ask you guys. Search for some other profile. Search for anything. Let's say I search for, uh, you know, um, ML operations. Okay. I'm just searching for another profile. Okay. The jobs are not that much as compared to a data engineer. See, 4,000 versus 14,000. And you can do your research, right? Search for anything, right? Don't search for a very common thing like manager. If you're searching for manager, it's like every profile will have. But MLOps is also there, right? But the field of data engineer, right, is as good rewarding as a data scientist. And it's as good as anything else can get, okay? And don't believe me, search for the salaries, okay? Go, go to Glassdoor, right? Search, make your research, right? 
uh, can't I do without login? Okay, let me do a quick login. Let's look for jobs, right? Let's look for let's look for a profile of again data engineer. We we'll look for salaries. Okay, okay, it will start giving me yeah data engineer salaries. See this <clears throat> on an average in India, right? The value is close to nine, right? But if you see the range, it goes up to eighteen lakhs. That's only for freshers, right? If you go to senior data engineer or lead data engineer, it's even higher, right? And this is based on an average value. If you stand out of the crowd, if you know the skills, right? Then it's even higher. See, see the postings, right? Data engineer, 12 to 14 lakhs. And this, this will be only for one, two years of experience, right? Once you go to even more, it will be a very good paying job, okay? Any questions out here? I'll show you the learning curve for a data engineer, okay? So as a data engineer, Having skills like coding, data warehousing, knowledge of operating system, data analysis is all must, right? It's like an amalgam of this. It's not only coding. It's not only data warehousing. Okay, let's discuss each of these terms so that you know. Okay, knowledge of operating system. That's not difficult at all. So what kind of experience do you guys have? Okay, let's pause knowing about data engineers and let's get to know each other. So, that, so I'll tell you, right? Uh, you can even search that on LinkedIn. One of my students, her name is Amrita. I am mentioning her because she had around 12 years of experience, right? And she was into traveling industry, okay? Two, uh, basically, uh, two cent travels, right? And she was into sales department for them. Like totally a tangential profile as compared to what all you guys are doing, right? Totally a tangential profile. And honestly, it took her around eight months of dedication, right? Which included... Obviously, coursework, then applying to jobs, uh, searching for jobs within the company, right? All that she tried. But after eight to, I think, 10 months of effort, right? She was able to transition. And as of now, she is working as a lead data engineer, right? Because her interest was more in terms of coding. As compared to data science, data engineer is one profile which is a bit heavy in coding as compared to data science, right? But as the time proceeds, right, if you learn it now, right, data engineers will be much more valuable than data science test. So if you can, if she can, you can also do, right? You can look for her, right? Uh, in my LinkedIn common friends, you will find it, right? So it's easy to transition. It's just that it won't be served in plates. You need to be good. You need to put in effort. So coding is one place that you should be good. And when I say coding, you need to be good in one of the programming languages. That's it. The reason because we will use that programming language, whatever is the programming language, we'll use that to copy data from different sources to our system. Then once you have copied the data, you need to manage that data, right? So for that, you need some data warehousing. Nowadays, this data warehousing is provided by there is something called AWS by Amazon. We have Microsoft Azure. I mean, there are a lot of tools for even collection and storing of data. Third, you should know a few of the operating systems like Ubuntu. I mean, obviously you will learn that, right? Ubuntu or any Linux based system that is mostly used in or as a data engineer. And lastly, you should have the skills, you should have the knowledge, analyze all such data, okay? So coding is nothing but learning about any kind of that programming language. Warehousing is how to keep that particular data. Operating system, Linux, Red Hat, I mean, you should know few of those operating systems and you should know how the operating systems work in general. That's how the job of data engineer is so much essential, so much, you know, pivotal for all of us, right? So rather than coding everything, data warehousing, there are a few more skills that are very much helpful. One of them is critical thinking, okay? So how critical thinking helps, right? When you have to... You know, like I said, there is millions of or GBs or TBs of data that you want to collect, right? Because if you are not able to collect this data, you cannot train any kind of AI mode. So there should be a mechanism, right? It's not like I can do copy paste. If I am working with such humongous amount of data, I cannot just go and do copy paste, right? So it is very difficult if we are not able to do it properly. So what we have to do is we create something called pipeline. Any idea what is pipeline? Any Anything that you can think of what could be pipeline. So we create something called as data pipelines. What is a pipeline? Have you heard about your sewer pipelines, right? Or water pipeline or electricity pipeline, all that we have heard, right? So it connects 
So if there's this is a pipeline, so let's say this is our uh, municipality. It will give us water. This is connected so to some interconnection. This is connected to probably our sector or sector water tank. So every uh, sector, at least in uh, the place where I stay, has water tanks, right? And from these water tanks, the water is supplied to individual homes, right? And even municipality is connected with something right it is connected to either rivers or anything there there is some kind of connection right so there is a pipeline service which flows from here here and finally the water reaches there will be cleaning plants in between there will be plants to clean the data in between and ammonia and everything is added all that is done isn't it the same thing is with data okay this is the same thing that is with data let me give you a scenario and you will help me design our data pipeline for it. how many of you have watched shark tank going to talk about a brand from there. So there was a brand which used to sell banana chips. Now, okay, investment done, everything done. Now, Ashneer Grover, let's say, okay, if someone doesn't know, it's fine. Okay, there's a brand name called Beyond Snack, which came in Shark Tank. And Shark Tank is a platform where startups come to pitch for their products. Okay, so Ashneer Grover invested in this particular startup. Right, it gave some amount to it to, to grow the business. And in exchange, he got some stake. What happened is, Okay, it's been three, four months, five months. Now, Ashneed wants to see how is the brand performing. And apart from looking at sales and everything, right? So, you want to look at it from different angles. One thing is want to look at from sales, obviously. You want to look at from sentiment angle, basically. And this could be offline sales and this could be online sales. Online on Amazon, it is being sold. On Flipkart, it's being sold. If sentiment is generally what the people are talking about. So how will you design this? The question is to you guys. How will you design this whole project? For getting sales offline and online data, how will I do? Offline, I'll go to my wholesalers. So I'll collect daily sale volume from my retail chain, which could be wholesalers. Similarly, online, you can check Amazon and Flipkart, wherever this brand is being listed and see what is the daily sale volume. And you need to Keep track for it. So you'll keep uh, keep doing it every day or maybe every hour. You'll want this dump, right? Because you want to see if the sale is hiking or if the sale is increasing in some particular day. Similarly, you will do it here every day or hour. Thirdly, what people are talking about it, you will go to Amazon or Flipkart reviews. You will look at product reviews and see what are the, uh, you know, what people are reviewing about it. Secondly, you will go to Twitter and see what are people saying about this brand. Now, if I have information from all these four sources, then I can say my brand is doing good, bad or worse, isn't it? If I gather data from all of this, then I can analyze that particular data and say, right guys, we'll try to correlate, we'll try to study. I mean, there's a lot of things that we'll try to. And do you think getting this data every day, every hour is so easy? No, right? So if I talk about this, okay, there will be some channel from where I need to get this information again and again. If I talk about this, I'll need to interact with Flipkart, Amazon APIs for it. But as API, basically, if I want to know how my product is doing, I'll uh, refer Flipkart and Amazon API to get dump off. So every hour they'll tell me, okay, today in this are 30 products for sale, in this are 40 products for sale, and so on. Similarly, from this channel. And similarly, reviews will keep on adding, right? Every few minutes, there will be a new review. And I won't dump off all those new reviews. Similarly, on Twitter, every time there will be a new new thing, right? So for all this, I'll create pipelines which feed the data. I'll create a pipeline for this. All these data sources, I'll clean that particular data. When I say clean, what I mean is, so for example, on Twitter, maybe someone is just have, although it has uh, tagged, you know, beyond snack. But it has tagged in a uh, tagged in a wrong way. It didn't meant to tag it, but it did. Okay. Similarly, there could be ratings and reviews which just rated without writing anything. So you will clean the data so that you only consider valid data. Or maybe people can, you know, jokingly what they can do, they can write a review and write it in Chinese, just jokingly, right? People can do that. Similarly, on Twitter they can do that. Or maybe someone is someone doesn't like Kashmir Grover. Okay, let's say he'll go and you know say bad things about banana snacks, right? Just so that he can take a revenge from Ashneer. Things like that could happen. So you'll clean that particular data. Again, there will be pipelines. Now you have cleaned the data. The next will be analyzing that particular data, basically finding okay, uh, what are the sales? Is the sale is 
sale is growing on year, uh, you know, month on month basis or quarter on quarter basis and so on. You see all those things. Okay. Once you have done analyze, you will again create a pipeline to interpret the results. And these results are finally communicated to Ashni, maybe in a five point summary, just to check the health of the brand. That's it. In five point summary, he'll get to know. Okay. Because he doesn't handle one company. He'll handle hundreds and two hundreds of such companies. He just have five minutes to look at this or 10 minutes or 20 minutes to look at these numbers. So from converting this human Humongous data to converting it into this five point summary. Data engineer's job is very critical. It's at the very start. Wherever I've drawn these pipelines, everywhere a data engineer is involved. As a data engineer, that will be very, very helpful for you. And the reason data engineering is becoming topmost skill, right? So along with those skills, we need some basic understanding of the machine learning algorithms also, okay? Because if you don't have this basic understanding, right, you won't be able to actually plot or make any conclusion about the data, right? You should understand those algorithms. And then lastly, you should obviously have communication skills, which is a key, right? For any profile, data scientists, data engineers, all those skills, right require this there are multiple career path and recognition that you can get right so like i said one is offered by amazon aws certified big data speciality right or it's by microsoft which is using azure then there is something by sas okay i myself am, am sas certified when i started my career i think in 2015 i gave the exam for sas i, I started in 2014 and 2015 i attempted SAS certification and then I cleared that particular cert uh, certification. Back then SAS was very popular, but nowadays I'll say AWS and Azure are much more popular. Similar certification by Databricks, right? Then you have uh, by Google also, right? All these certifications actually help you get and stand out on the crowd when you are looking for a data engineer profile, right? And why this Amazon, Azure, Databricks, all are there? Because these are nothing but big data platforms, right? They have tools that help you handle this big data. Like I said, data warehousing can be done. So that's why when you specialize in the tool offered by Google and you attempt their paper, you will be a Google certified data engineer. If you do it using SAS, then you will be SAS certified and so on. So you can look and research on your side to see which particular certification and which particular certification offers the most to you. You can attempt these exams like for SAS. I think the cost of that particular one paper is around 16, 17,000. So obviously if the paper cost is so high, like 16,000 for just attempting the paper. And that's for first attempt. If you are clearing in second attempt, it's like 12, 13 K or something. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, that's right. So if the paper is so costly, you will want to prepare for it. And that for that preparation, you need to be very sure about, you know, the role of data engineer, the skills and responsibilities of data engineer. Okay, let's let's understand responsibilities of a data engineer. Let's go one by one. Okay, let's try to understand this a bit. So first thing, analyzing and organizing unstructured data. So what it means is when you are gathering the data from so many sources, you need to organize that particular data. So like in this particular example, when we were talking about getting this solar data from this multiple sources like this, we need some kind of methodology with which we can collect this data that's also a job of data engineer like we did we added the step of cleaning and organizing this unstructured data right do you think tweets when i download tweets from twitter do you think it will be in form of rows and columns no right it's unstructured so as a data engineer your job is to organize unstructured data into structured data as your job you will be also be responsible for storing this data okay so we use different database, like there's one database called MongoDB, which is very popular these days, which is a NoSQL type of database. Basically, you don't, for SQL, you need rows and columns. For NoSQL, it's for unorganized data, like videos, images, all this data, if you need to store, you need use something called this. And now you ask me that, do you, should you know MongoDB also to store the data? The answer is yes. So there are a lot of small, small technologies that come into place for you to be a good data engineer. That's why if you go and, you know, try to learn all the things by yourself, right? You don't have to be master in every one of them. You should know each one of them, but you should not aim for being master in all of them. Everyone understands the difference between the two. You cannot be and you should not be master of all skills, but you should know all the skills. You should know one what to use where, 
right and that's why the job is tricky else if you go in understanding let's say if even if you go and you know want to understand about mongodb you will spend 6 months in learning mongodb and then once you come out as a data engineer you might be just working on a small part of it. so you don't need to focus on all of mongodb only the components that are required for a data engineer you should focus on them second part obviously creating pipeline right that we already see, saw that you know we can create pipelines the pipelines are nothing but programming languages programming or coding that will features the data so you have analyzed the data now you collect the data let's go through the third part which is examine your company's requirement and goals so many a times right you cannot just go and download every data there will be restrictions for example let's say i'm working with a client i'm working with a banking client so i'm not allowed to copy their customers data i cannot copy okay if i have to copy uh, i am doing some project for banking i cannot copy their customer data okay i cannot copy your pan aadhar customers pan aadhar right and if people are able to copy that's nothing but a data leakage right which is an offense so a data engineer must be aware about these about these policies also okay that you cannot copy pii information everyone knows what is pii personal information pii in terms of we call this as pii which is personal information let's say you go to a doctor if i access all your reports would you like it there is a right to privacy and if i don't do that i'll be you know punished by the law so data engineer job is also to when they are copying such data anyways i'll need those medical records right but i don't need to know that those medical records belong to you so if i am building a ai system to detect cancer let's say okay so i need patients report i need different patients report to create a model because i need the data but what i can do is let's say in actual this belongs to a person name a i can hide that particular name and maybe replace it with some random name maybe j with any random name any random value so that was i have the data also but i don't know who to it belongs it does make sense now i can keep so data engineer must be thinkful or must be aware about this he should be able to think across that i cannot or i should not access data like this okay then conducting data analysis and reporting on results obviously once you have the data you will conduct data analysis and report results on them then comes the next step which is preparing data for predictive and prescriptive modeling so what is predictive modeling what is prescriptive modeling what is predictive modeling so when i am telling a company that this person will churn out remember the same example if i am telling a person will churn out will churn or not right that's nothing but predictive modeling you are predicting something so if i am predicting let's say uh, maybe john i can i am saying that john can become a data scientist in next 6 months let's say i am predicting that so that's nothing but predictive modeling however if i tell you guys please focus a lot on data these days because data is the next big thing so you start preparing for a uh, career in data science or any data engineer or data ops things like that then this is me guiding you based on the market trends i'm guiding you that okay or i'm prescribing you that okay take up a career in data this will reward you in long term so that's nothing but prescriptive model okay so the salary range of all these top companies i mean let's talk about it right visa right So visa all of us knows is nothing but what what does visa do it offers card right or what payment gateway it's a payment technology company right so for this payment technology companies it is very essential to know which is a fraudulent transaction which are not fraudulent transactions right so they need data engineers a lot accenture what does accenture do software services company they also work on that right they also work a lot on you know data right because it provides consultancy it provides strategy awesome similarly deloitte consultancy you need data for consultancy adobe it needs data for its softwares ibm mercedes i mean a lot to talk about anything right and as we saw over the internet also the salary range for data engineer goes from 4 to 20 lakh and this is not i mean initially when the session started i showed you from the portal itself right i showed you on the portal itself this is how a typical range of salary is okay okay typically for a data science uh, for a data engineer right these are the sample questions that are asked in an interview right so they are asked to explain data engineering what is data modeling right what can be different types of data design schemas in data modeling what is structured data what is unstructured data what is the full form of hdfs hdfs is nothing is nothing but high density uh, file system right so different blocks and scanner and i mean 
that's some of the questions that are asked in the interview. And it's easy to crack them, right? There's nothing much that is required. So future of data engineering is quite bright. As I said, how do we decide design schemas? This is something you will learn, okay? So depending on the scale and the volume, whether you want live data, whether you want static data, right? I am done from my end. So thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. Stay connected. Thank you.